all those are for th they, they are uh, interrelated, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I will try. You will, you I will, will relate them. I will relate them. <laughs> um, because we have to go back again and again to uh, the key issues of the question. Uh, let's begin with the question, the tough one. What is modernity? Well, modernity is whatever is now. If you define modernity as now, <laughs> that whatever is now is modern. And that is not, uh, you know, this is, so this is a, a no. fastidious, no, 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 a fastidious, but, but actually is the only really uh, 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 good way. Because theories of modernization were predicated on a notion of uh, precisely modern economies and then underdeveloped economies. And this is something because they're not yet modern. And then came the, the Marxist uh, 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 economists and said, no, no, they're not. Uh, uh, they're traditionally underdeveloped. They have been, they have, pro the underdevelopment itself is a product of capitalist modernity. So you cannot simply say that you have the developed societies in Europe, and then you have the underdeveloped in Latin America. And the question is only how the underdeveloped Latin American economies somehow go through the same process of development as this is a wrong way of looking at modernity. Obviously, modernity uh, is a temporal category. It was the debates in the 16th century emerged the moderns against the ancients. And since then has been a way for some people having a project of change of transformation, uh, naming those who were not with them reactionary, with the progressive and traditionalism. And this is the whole philosophy of time that has constituted the, the kind of the projection, what, what precisely Habermas ca calls the project of modernity. In the process, we know that this is related to all kinds, let's say, let's put 15th century as the, as the uh, uh, kind of turning point. And you have together the emergence of the Protestant Reformation. And if you follow Max Weber, you know that it has a lot to do with modernity, the emergence of the modern individual, modern capitalism, vocational ethic. But then other people have pointed how Protestantism is the Puritan Revolution is intimately linked with democracy and the revolution of the saints. Other people have linked it to science. So you have the emergence of uh, uh, Protestantism. You have the emergence of the modern scientific revolution. You have the emergence of modern states territorial states that eventually become uh, 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 what we recognize as the modern democratic state. And then you have uh, also the, the age of discoveries and the emergence of a globalized. And we know that the system of even the Westphalian system of states that fight with one another, but then they have a process of global colonialism together. And how at the same time that you have a separation of nation states, you have a globalization of capitalism going on together. So it has to do with science, it has to do with the states, it has to do with markets, and it has to do with individualism. Those are the four fundamental things having to do with modernity. But then those things, even from the 15th century to the 20th, change radically all the time. What is the modern form of modern state? With, when we talk of democracy today, we say, well, it's liberal democracy. But in the 19th century, liberalism and democracy were opposed. Liberals were anti-democrats and democrats were anti-liberal. Uh, it took a whole process of transformation to fuse the two things. And we think today that to be a modern state means rule of law, uh, liberalism, and democracy. But precisely, the, the, the Prussian state was a rule of law state, but neither liberal nor democratic. It was modern, but it had neither liberal nor democracy. America was the only one that was the three. The French were Democrats, but not liberals, uh, and so on. And the, 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 the British were liberal, but not Democrats. Uh, so you have. Uh, uh, and you, the same thing you say about individualism. We know from Charles Taylor, of course, the importance of the expressive romantic uh, uh, self-expression is central to the category of the mother individual. But this emerged precisely as what was called a reactionary anti-modern against the utilitarian individualism. But today we understand that mother individualism is a fusion of utilitarian, self-interest, rational calculation, and self -exp romantic self-expression. So it takes all this kind of process uh, in every context. What would you characterize as a modern economy? A radical neoliberal market economy or a state uh, regulated control economy? Welfare state or, well, those are ideological issues. Which economy is more modern? The neoliberal uh, uh, American economy or the Scandinavian welfare state? Well, if uh, precisely even on this point, you have all kinds of variations. Today, uh, Chinese capitalism, I was mentioning it before, has all the characteristics of what Max Weber would define as non-rational, non-modern non capitalism. It has kinship capitalism, has state capitalism, and has gambling 
Those are the three things that he defines as irrational capitalism. But it's a perfectly rational, effective capitalism in the global market, I can tell you. So, <laughs> um, so we have, uh, yes, you could say that it is the globalization of science and technology. It's the globalization of, of, of market exchanges. Uh, uh, and it's the globalization of ideas of uh, uh, states, regulation kind of made up of citizen subjects and so on, and uh, public sphere. So this is what, what, uh, uh, what uh, Taylor calls the uh, horizontal uh, uh, societies of individuals gathering together for mutual benefit, so rather than hierarchical systems. And then it has to do with individualism. And uh, we, you could say that practically everywhere in the world, very few people would uh, 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 challenge the notion that uh, uh, the self-evident truths, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And you could add, uh, you know, it's interesting that the, 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 the American Revolution is liberty, the pursuit of happiness has no solidarity or fraternity, while, of course, liberté, égalité, fraternité. So we have liberty, equality, and the pursuit of happiness. They have liberty, equality, and uh, fraternity, solidarity. Those are the two modern, both are modern, but they, they have different elements in it. And so uh, these principles are gender equality. Nobody today dares slavery. Who would defend today slavery? Nobody. But we have more slavery today than when we had in the past in terms of the actual uh, oppression. So we formally we have no slaves anymore, but slavery is a system in the sense that you have millions of people that basically are totally under systems that, uh, that give them no freedom. Uh, gender equality, well, today you have, uh, if you ask Muslim women, 90% will tell you that Islam is the perfect religion precisely because it gives the perfect religion for gender equality. No liberated feminist in the West will, uh, how can you say Islam, the religion of gender equality? Well, uh, that's what Muslim women say and you have to take it seriously. So we are in a, in a context in which even when we use the same concepts, the same words, they mean very different things in different contexts. So we have democracy, yes, but Indian democracy is very different from the French and from the American and so on. So there has been a globalization of certain structures, but they're still very much connected with also all kinds of not only different institutional arrangements, because this is very, very easy to differentiate, but also very different cultural substantive uh, feeling what will be the formal structures. 